moment of inertia. In angular motion, Newton's second law states that the angular acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net torque acting on an object and inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the object. The greater the net torque, the greater the angular acceleration. The greater the moment of inertia, the lower the angular acceleration. The moment of inertia for a point mass is equal to its mass times its radial distance squared. To derive this, first take Newton's second law. Then multiply it by the radius. Insert the relationship between tangential and angular acceleration through the radius. Recognize that radius times force is the torque and rearrange the equation. The product in the parentheses is the moment of inertia for a point mass. For extended objects such as this cylinder, you can treat it as the collection of differential masses dm, each a radial distance away from the axis of rotation. To calculate the moment of inertia of such an object, it will be the integral of the r squared weighing of each differential mass. For radially symmetric objects, the end result will be some numerical constant times the mass of the object times its dimension squared. Moment of inertia is a scalar and its units will be kilograms times meters squared. Note that if the axis of rotation is different from the axis of symmetry, you will need to recalculate the moment of inertia from the axis of rotation. If the object has multiple measurements away from the axis of rotation, then the moment of inertia will still have the form of some numerical constant times the mass of the object times that dimension squared. Here is a table of some of the common moments of inertia used in introductory physics. You are encouraged to derive the formulas for yourself.